All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Saga, Saga of Tanya, Tanya the, the Evil, Evil, the, the movie. movie. Yep, we're yep. doing it. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's time. Mm -hmm. We have uh, we have uh, heard your guys' request for a long time. We're sorry it took us this long to do it. Yep. But we have had a lot of issues with doing uh, movie reactions and such, so we wanted to make that more of a thing. Mm -hmm. We announced recently on our 12-hour Halloween stream, you can check that out, there, there will be some movie reactions on the way. This is the first of those. Indeed. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy this. Let us know your thoughts and stuff regarding this one there, and mm -hmm. we'll try to make sure that those are passed along to us since we don't go into the comments. And there is a very real possibility, especially for this show, that there could be a season two. Which like, there's a would lot of source awesome. material in general out there still. Yeah, like as far as, you know, a studio's first performance, you know, with Studio Nut and, and this wonderful show, or mm -hmm. well, this show that came before this this movie, they did yeah. a really good job. They did like, a fantastic job. It was an job. absolute romp. It really felt like just the, the kind of just crazy fun that you can get only in anime. I agree. You know? So... Yeah. I am definitely looking forward to this movie. And Tanya as a character, Tanya von Degurachov, mm. is one of those uh, <laughs> one of those characters that you, you really only can get in anime and have it really work. Oh yeah. But the I wonder why <laughs> the the combination of that within the god you know battle being X, being yeah. X with also the historical World War One kind of AU yeah. fiction thing the, the the not Germany yeah mm -hmm. right right and you know not France and not the U S and or what mm -hmm. it kind of just was the U S basically and yeah. you know all the other other you know minor powers in in Europe at the time there that's uh that's something that'll be kind of interesting to see developed as we go on here because given that in the end of season one there was a temporary armistice called after mm -hmm. um uh the 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 father of mary sue was uh finally defeated yes uh, again <laughs> but now but now mary sue, mary sue. <laughs> will probably entre vous exactly they'll throw down and it'll be crazy I, good fun i can't Stress enough for those of you that remember those reactions that we did for Saga of Tiny Evil all that long ago. There was so much that I found funny about this series because mm -hmm. it took so much from the historical angle that it that it, it just felt like this show shouldn't have existed. And, and yet, yet just does. for me, almost, it just decided to. Mm -hmm. And ah, it's so fun. It's so fun. And also, it's an isekai. It is indeed. You know, technically. Mm -hmm. But it's one that I I will put up there and be like, no, this is one of those isekai that's worth well, worth you, watching. You wouldn't think, looking at it, that it's an isekai. Like, but it is. <laughs> but it is. But it is. It it you know in all like, the in all the creepy, awkward ways, in all the ridiculous ways. Yeah, it's uh -huh. actually an isekai. <laughs> and it's wonderful. And a monster in the form of a human girl. Indeed, yeah. our favorite not German lolly commander psycho. Exactly. Lawful evil. HR Max. reincarnated person. Yeah, it's salary man yep. with a god mm -hmm. complex fighting god. Yes. All of the yes. So, y'all, let's just jump right into it. Whoa! Oh All my right. god! This looks so good! Whoa! Yes, Susume indeed! Oh my god! <laughs> Oh, that classic love, music coming in! I love the flying sequences so much. Oh. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Time you to must pray. pray. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Survive. Oh my god. Too late. <laughs> okay. He chucked him out? Wait, oh my god! <laughs> Did he survive that? I don't There's think no so. Way. There's no way. Nut indeed. Well done. Whew. It's nice that they're reminding us of him. And how we, could we forget Serea, Serebreakov? <laughs> Serebreakov! Uh, yeah. Victoria. Yeah, Victoria. <laughs> Oh, I was kind of wondering if being X was going to do something there. But what actually happens? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that 
They're headed north, I guess? Well, the, the rules changed. Nice, nice intro. Here we go, yep. here we go. Cold open? Yeah, exactly. Oh! <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Last time we did recon, I got blown up! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Or so I'd like to say! Oh my god! Wow! Jesus! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! Oh. Okay. So we're going right. to face basically a potential Russian invasion, like the the not Russians, basically. I, I, I guess, because that would be east, you know, because they defeated right. all the enemies to the east that they had before. Mm -hmm. So this is like the far, far front. Hence but why hey, there's all the snow and stuff. Is they're basically headed towards you know right. what's like, like maybe near like Lithuania, Estonia equivalent, you know. But at least they're avoiding a land war in Asia. <laughs> I mean, technically, this is like Eurasia, you know, that, that yeah, middle yeah. area where it's neither one or the other. Are uh, they testing? How far does that thing go? Yeah. Oh, this is just happening All right, right now. Even though they're they're literally on recon, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Being X is such a uh -huh. dick. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Grab him by the family jewels. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. Oh my god. This. I forgot how much Tanya just <laughs> does not absolutely give a shit. Just not care at all. God, just the idea of flying infantry. Yep. With. D yeah, weapons yeah, there like you go. that. Right. This is what World War II turned into. You know, everything became in the aircraft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> of course. The classic Tanya move. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That. That's a bit far from now. Far from where we're at, right? And they will have mages there. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what are you what are you talking about? Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like the tenth time she said commies at this point. Yeah. They're trying to build her up as like, you know, the protagonist of her own story. Exactly. In any other story she would be the main character. Yeah. But we've got a villain protagonist here. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. The holy warrior uh -huh. heads out. Yeah. There is nothing more terrifying than a oh warrior boy. who believes they are given God's, you know, mm -hmm. own power to enact justice. Well, actually, no, there is one thing more terrifying uh someone who's actually been given god's right power. right <laughs> rather than someone that just believes it yeah <laughs> <laughs> jesus <laughs> oh my god <laughs> So she's not... Hmm. And she's not a great shot yet. Right, so she may be a Mary Sue, but she's not a Mary Sue. Right, right. <laughs> nice. That's a good point. But watch, when she gets, like, possessed by being X. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's when... Ugh. Yep. That is actually kind of amazing. Whoa! Whoa! Okay. That would be kind of incredible to, to think about if they're like, we came here to help and already we're needed... Uh -huh. In that respect, yeah, it really does make them feel like the other protagonist squad out there, you know. Yeah, it's like they're starting to fight back. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. God, I love her commentary. It's so good. Yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> Just declaring victory. Yeah. He's <laughs> gonna have a conniption. Yeah. I love it. Oh my god. Now we're getting our like war propaganda. Yes. Movie. Wait. What? Wow. Oh my god. Wow. That is genius. I love it. Oh my god! You're lucky she didn't have a bayonet attached. <gasps> the gun! That was his gun! Her father's! Was that- was that her f- Yeah, yeah! Wow, okay. Oh, oh boy! Shit. Oh boy! Oh no! Alright! Alright! Someone prayed faithfully! Yep! Yep! Run, Tanya, run! It's personal now. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the glow. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> All right. This is one of those shows where the instant someone prays or mentions God, you actually kind of go, <laughs> right? <laughs> like your heart rate increases a little bit. You're like, yeah. oh no. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's extremely personal on multiple levels. Mm -hmm. They definitely kicked them in the family jewels. Yep. What's it gonna be that speaks? The lamp. The radio. <laughs> oh, sure, the radio. Oh my god. Oh no, that freaking that thing. Don't jaw. Aha. God, this is some some good music, some oh yeah, presentation. I love how the action is easy to follow even though it's using magic. Oh my god. Right. What? Oh my god. God, this okay. movie's amazing. All right. All right. All right, we don't need to show the rest of the battle. It's it's over. They did yeah, it. They, yeah. they freed. They were off. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Divisions. <laughs><笑><笑> wow. Something leaking is possible, though. But they do have the forces who are staged at Tegenhof as well. Right. But eight divisions. If That's we go, insane. If we go by the usual terms for a division, isn't that like 120,000 soldiers? Uh, yeah, they might not be full divisions, so like it could be a bit less, but... I would say no less than 60,000 right. or 80,000. Yeah, I'd, I'd guess probably much. around 80,000, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sit straight up. <laughs> Victory or death? Yeah, give us, give me liberty or give me death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many like hodgepodge things thrust uh -huh. into her speeches that make it so much more like fun. Yep. When she like directly references historical stuff and everything, mm -hmm. and everyone else is like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> oh, holy shit! Yeah, that's eight divisions. All right. Holy crap. I mean, hey. Oh, oh my god, this is brutal. Yeah, so, th yeah, those shovel things, those were a real thing. Like, th they would, they were made to also be able to be used for that. The whole rest of the Eastern Front is free, basically, because they well, devoted, like... No, not necessarily. Because if, if we go by the numbers here... This is probably only about twenty percent of their forces. Uh, sure, but but it's it's still a a large force that's yes. moving away from the yes. other. Yes, one areas. of the fronts just got a little bit of breathing, but mm -hmm. but probably not that much, really. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, she's angry. <laughs> She's like, this is being X. I'll handle the mages, you handle the ships. <laughs> Tell the mixed fire bomb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No tours. Exactly. Yeah, that callback to season one. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh no. 
What? Whoa! What? Jeez! Oh my god. Holy shit. Alright. Dog fight wow. time. Dog fight time. Oh my god, this is so cool! It's <laughs> <This is> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Oh my god! <laughs> This is peak anime right here. Yeah. And Mary isn't at all concerned of like, wait a minute, this seems a bit strange that I can do this stuff. No, no, she's, she's. Yeah, this is what she wants to do, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yes, yes, please, yes. Oh yeah. Oh, that is so good. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. What? <laughs> oh. 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 Oh crap. Oh crap. <laughs> I can no longer nut Studio Nut. Uh -huh. I am spent. Look at this. This is so freaking fun. During the discussion, we're going to be having some post nut clarity. Yeah, yeah. No way. No way. <laughs> she went to the Prometheus school of running away, but even worse, she failed it because she didn't even move, you know? Oh my god. Oh, it's time to pray now. Mm -hmm. She could hear it. Point blank. Unstoppable force meets the immovable object. Tanya, will you be safe from the blast? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. All right. Her eyes look just like yours, don't they, Tanya? Yeah. Whoa! Oh! Oh! Oh no! That is a broken arm. At least. Shoot. Um. She's she's out, dude. Like her eyes changed back color. Uh huh. There. Yep. Yep. Jeez. Oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah, don't don't uh get conservative on ammo. Nope. Nope. No way. Oh. She's not gonna survive this, is she? There is no way. Dude, dude, yes. Yes, she is. Oh my Watch. god. Yeah, I mean Someone's gonna pray for her. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she's gonna come back like some crazy zombie. <laughs> 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 You know, you know how things go when you start bragging. Yeah. Like, <laughs> cushy life. <laughs> yep. Uh huh. Find meals. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> wow. Too bad. Wow. This music. The line delivery is so good. Ah. Oh. And that's, yeah, there you go. That's the end of the, that's the, that's end the end of the, end of the movie. movie. God, I love, oh, that's right. The art for Tanya, like, especially like from the light novels and everything is so good. All right, so we basically had the Federation incursion mini arc. Yep. Which then after they routed the, uh, the Federation, then they basically got a little bit of breather room on the Eastern Front, mm -hmm. but that war is still going on. Right. So the actual, like, victory over the Federation hasn't happened yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's so used to this. Yeah. It's amazing. 
<laughs> She's like, yes, keep going. Yes, keep yes, going. Yes. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, that is amazing. Wow. Mm. Just the, There's more the, responsibility. <laughs> See, because that's the thing. In times of... Oh, what? <laughs> Tanya's just gonna end up leading the Empire. Experimental Combat Arms Unit. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love it. Excellent end. Wonderful end. Wow. That that's perfect. Yep. That's yep. the perfect way to do it. Is and, yes, of course you're going to be mm -hmm. rear command. Yep. But now we're gonna give you all the power. Right. Within you're not gonna be like middle level mid level unit. management. You're going to be upper level management. Mm -hmm. Because you're doing such a good job. Yeah, yeah. This is the classic Tanya problem. If she goes too competent, she gets asked to do everything herself. Exactly. If she goes into the incompetent area... Then she then they, dies or fails. Then they pu yeah, she gets punished, essentially, right. for it in a and way... And that's why she likes that mid-level management. Right. Because you can she just can, sort of... She can yeah. pass a lot of the buck on to other people. Yeah. She can do, do the little, ass, mm, you know, yep, yep, yep. You know. <laughs> sure, wriggle that nose in there, get a right, nice, right. good whiff. Uh -huh. But then uh, she gets basically all the 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 comfort within exactly. the, the role itself. Yep. But, no. I... <laughs> of, of the parts in the show that handled, like, this much content, mm. I... I think this one is the best. Oh like, yeah, and and like that makes sense because I mean visually and everything, all the presentation of yeah. this was such a treat, right? But I also Studio cared, nut indeed. Right, but I also cared way more about Mary Sue than I did the villains yeah. that um, mm -hmm. Tanya was up against before, because oftentimes they would be played up a bit for the joke that they were compared to the extreme competence right. that Tanya had because of the, you know, yeah. I'm actually a Japanese salaryman. With exactly. All the Mary Sue has that. X factor so that we can actually be concerned about the conflict, like of what's going to happen. But also a very good emotional reason. Right. Good emotional reasons alongside the comedy, right? Because she's Mary Sue, you know, mm -hmm. like that, which sort of fits into Tanya's uh, way of delivering a lot of her lines and sort of playing yeah. it up and stuff, you know, that meta humor. But then at the same time, if this was a different story, I could totally see Mary Sue being a not the best main character, but a, a decent, serviceable main character. Oh, very the, serviceable. You know, like, yeah, she's got a... She's got that classic, tragic backstory. Yep. And Tanya's yep. responsible. And a really strong why that'll keep her moving forward. Yep. And, and she's provides, got a team of people around her. Yeah, and provides some good drama within that team as well. Mm -hmm. When she either breaks orders or rallies everyone mm -hmm. for the uh, cause that she uh, is fighting for. And her own vengeance. Yes. But okay, is that, uh, is that it? Yep, Looks I like think that's so. Y'all. That was a treat. Studio Nut just nut like, indeed. just blew their load mm -hmm. all over this movie And here. oh this my was, god, this was it a looked fantastic good. fantastic follow-up so to the cool. show. It was so cool. Like, yeah. like, okay, the show had some fantastic visuals. Oh right? yeah. It, 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 it did not mm -hmm. disappoint in, by any stretch of the imagination. Yep. And, and the imaginative setting itself Added a lot to it, right? Anytime there were those flying sequences, battles between mages and stuff, I loved it. Those yep. tracking shots were amazing. But we got that, like, amped up to, like, times ten here. Yeah, they did a full-on, like, Levi I know, City right? sequence yeah. from, like, Attack on Titan yep. with Mary Sue and Tanya mm -hmm. going through the whole area there. And they did have to drop the, the frame rate, basically, sure. equivalent to make it even work. But it was still glorious to look at. Many and animators died to bring you this. <laughs> Jeez, those guys went Amazing all out. Amazing spectacle. And, and that's nothing to be said about all the other presentation aspects of this movie. The music, again... The music was great. ...was really good. They had a lot of new tracks that we didn't have in the show proper. Mm -hmm. And then they're also used at 
very specific points, all the classic tracks that we've come to appreciate from the show at this point as well. But then there were also a lot of really cool moments where there was some character animation outside of like the explosions and lighting Mm -hmm. and all that that worked really well. And then also some good old classic 3D for those really necessary moments where you Mm -hmm. have to field thousands of moving characters on the screen or probably hundreds, but you know. Right, right. To say nothing of like all the equipment and stuff that Mm -hmm. really comes to life in 3D, right? Because it's an inanimate object. So yeah, let's let's see it. Let's have it pop. Mm -hmm. And And then of course, of course, the lines. Oh yes, the voice actors all just played their part so well. Mm -hmm. I have to give special props, of course, to uh, Tanya Seiyu, Mm -hmm. who we recently found out is also the Seiyu of uh, Komachi from uh, Origairu, which is a a fun little thing That's a fun surprise. She's also, you know, Madoka. Oh, yeah, she's, because it's it's, uh, Hana Kanazawa? No, 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 different, different. What was the name? Okay, okay. But, yeah, she's she's everywhere. So, yeah, um, she's just, in general, amazing and and awesome. Yeah, there are a lot of moments where you could feel the vitriol and also just oh, the, yeah. uh, why is yep. this happening? Like, like, like all of her voice acting mm-hmm. was stellar. But then we got to actually know Mary Sue's character a little bit. Yep. And the voice acting with with her as well was was just a really good performance. Mm-hmm. Like she had to portray that descent into madness. Right. And loss of self as she basically did the thing that the movie's themes were about with the loss of you know, mm-hmm. basically yourself as you let your personal feelings get involved in the conflict overall. Yep. And then how you, you know, per, you know, per, participate in the war becomes a really big deal. Yeah. yeah. Like this, this series in general is one of those few that I feel like rides almost entirely on like one character, right? In sure. Tanya, right? Because totally. and, and it handles it very well. Tanya yep. is a is a fantastically entertaining character, right? Yep. Watching her escapades and all of that is mm-hmm. is nothing short of wonderful. Yeah. But they could have just kept it to that for this mm-hmm. movie, and that would have been fine, right? right? Give us that spectacle. It'll be great. Yeah, and then just have Mary Sue basically just be a powerhouse on the rise. Yeah. A, not really give too a much A new to obstacle for Tanya to just sort of overcome. And, and she was that, but, but there was more to it. And not just with her, but also yep. with the other characters. Mm-hmm. We got more from Victoria. We got to see some pretty good stuff with, with Tanya's crew. Like, mm-hmm. like that, even though there are a lot of them and we don't know more than a few of them by name, you yep. know, we st- I feel like we really did get to know know them a bit better in those few breather moments they had right. between the, the battles. Yeah, it, it's tricky to figure out ways to characterize them other than their specific kind of, you know, role and function within mm-hmm. uh, Tanya's squad. But the ways in which we get to see them being human mm-hmm. and allowing their personal feelings to be expressed in a manner that is actually sustainable you know, because of their being a war and stuff, they need those breather moments in order for them to maintain yep. their semblance of sanity, if you will. Oh, yeah. But, you know, a lot of the other characters, like Tanya, for instance, mm-hmm. it's sometimes it's just going back east to west, west to east, east to west, back yep. and forth, all these things to where uh, she's sometimes barely holding on. So she needs to be like, I am now of the illness that requires 24 hours. 24 hours. Do not... Uh, mm-hmm. Do not, you know, interrupt Duty rest. me yeah. at all mm-hmm. unless there's something going on. So go, go off crazy. and go crazy. Yep. yep. And one of the things that I, I appreciate about that, because yes, it, it is a it is something that Tanya is very much doing for herself, right? Yep. She wants to be able to recuperate because this has been hell, right? Yep. But at the same time, if you look at it from a different perspective, it's showing growth on her part. Totally. Because she was the kind of person that absolutely never cared about the people that were under her, right? In her previous life, she was just a straight up dick to pretty much everybody, even when she didn't need to yeah, be. Yeah, it's the reason why she's here. Yeah, exactly. So here, now granted, you know, they they help her specifically in some very mm-hmm. direct ways. So right. it, it is in her best interest to do that. But that's still not something to be ignored. Right. You know? Like, Over the course of time, she's become more attached to them, not just from the standpoint of them being really competent and helpful and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but she spends a great deal of her energy and time to make sure that she is managing her human resources properly. Indeed. Which is hilarious when she says it that way Mm -hmm. because it reminds us where she came from so that we know, ah, yes, she's still, you know, 
she still got her own screw loose and everything like that. So that's, oh, yeah. that's its own very mm -hmm. specific thing and stuff like that. And then her disdain as well for like the commies and stuff to where she's just how like... Many, how many times did she say commies I, this I, movie? Like, I, I, I don't even know. It was in but, a dozen. But I, as it kept happening, I realized almost in some way something that might have been just a little bit of a joke because uh -huh. this is a Japanese anime, mm -hmm. you know, is the idea of if you say the word kami... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that kind of funny? Oh, wow. It I didn't might think be, about it that. It might be just a dumb pun. Uh-huh. But and, I want to go back and almost take a look at what she was saying when she right. said commies. Is, yeah, that the, she, is that the subtitles? Or was she saying a word that translates into commies? Because I don't think there would be a word that translates into right, that. Right, that's So slang. it's kind of so, like she's yeah. saying gods or god yeah we're gonna it, kill them all we're gonna kill all these right. little gods oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah so like so that i, I don't I know that might be a funny funny that. pun or something like that they, they were doing just for fun but mm -hmm. yeah she still has a very low um value for the uh the lives of her enemies in that that respect. is very true yes but it, but it is something that she had to do things like justify of like ah yeah these these people are yeah, no, 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 no. They're they're horrible. They they do all these horrible things. So therefore, it's it's justified for me to kill them and stuff, and thus do all the kind of things that brought her personal feelings yeah. into the war, uh -huh. which then led to the attack on Moscow, yep. thus bringing about all the consequences. I would say rather naturally, sure, as I opposed mean, to it being a very overt Being X interference, because Being yeah. X obviously knew that this was going to happen. Uh huh. Because he's not omnipotent, but he is he is basically like a god type figure. Yep. And you know the the coincidence of Mar Mary Sue being at Moscow during the time mm -hmm. when the actual attack happened. That's that's one of those things right. of where it's like that's where his interference yeah, uh, it, came into play. It seems more like he's an opportunist in this movie than like doing other stuff. Are you checking to see if like, I'm checking to see what it, it sounds like when she says commie. Yeah, if she actually says commie or if it's a, another another term for it. Right. But like exactly. I feel like that might almost it almost feels like it could be commentary with the fact that being X didn't interfere here because like, like not, not really, not as much as mm -hmm. being X normally would because Tanya was setting him up for it. Yep. Like it's exactly. almost Tanya's shtick to be like, yes, I've finally won. Screw you. I hate you. You suck. Oh shit. Something happened. And okay. hold on know. one second. I need to, I need to listen to this mm -hmm. here. <laughs> Uh, she does not say kami's in the phonetic uh, okay. way, so it might actually be a translation thing. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, oh, man, that yeah, would have been, been so funny. That would have been funny, but that it's, kind of it's not that. would be amazing. It's but, not that. So, okay. either but, way. Um, but the idea that like, okay, you know, even taking the whole idea of like, you know, uh, God or whatever, right? A lot of the people would say that, eh, would he even really need to do much stuff like this? Cause humans kind of screw themselves over pretty well all on their own. Right. Sure. And, and in Tanya's situation, she has so much pride and so much ego. That's why she's in this whole situation. It doesn't right. take a lot for her to say like, yeah, sure, whatever. I owe it all to you or something. And then she maybe, maybe being ex would be like, all right, there you go. Here's a, you know, here's, here's a nice cushy life for you. Right. Mm -hmm. But because she's so holding to the thing of, no, no, no I've got to stick it to you. Right. This is personal. Right. Then everything just ends up going awfully. And is being ex interfering? Possibly, but only in the minor instances, it seems. Yeah, and there was no actual conversation yep. with Being X in the entire movie, which felt like in some ways they were bringing the point home with what you're saying, that this is just the result of human beings, mm -hmm. their hubris and their emotions being brought in to a war, which is already yep. a horrible thing brought about by failed diplomacy and human emotion, right. usually. So, therefore, um, well, human, human, human failings, if you will, uh -huh. you know, greed and and all lust stuff. and power and all, all that, all that stuff. But the uh, the point at which we have basically the comedy part of the movie, mm -hmm. where they make their propaganda bit and they oh, blow God, up that all was great. the yep. elements of of Moscow, if 
we were on the side of Moscow during this conflict if the protagonist actually was Mary Sue mm -hmm. and we saw this happening and the enemy was mocking you know, oh, yeah. our protagonist oh, yeah. and their Classic allies and villain. Stuff. Like oh, cartoonish yeah, this, villain. This even. is a cartoonish villain thing to do, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it feels very much like Tanya fell into the hypocritical trap of uh -huh. her own philosophy, but then after realizing the results of those mistakes and failings, she then tries to use that, I would say, good logic to the commanding officers mm -hmm. to say, hey, this is why we need to give yep. uh, our, our we'll strategic the back. stuff yeah. uh -huh. uh, a little bit of a reevaluation, and I will be the one to help to do that. I, which is which is funny because they didn't call her out on the whole thing of, well, it is kind of your doing that we're in this situation now that they're all motivated to attack us and we don't have a way to sue for peace quickly. So sure. are you really the best person for this? Well, <laughs> I don't know. And yet I totally wouldn't, I would never doubt her competence to be able to oh, bring yeah. some reform to the strategic mm -hmm. feelings of the troops. Well, and, and so one of the things that I love about this, her Tanya's whole conflict with being X, right? Mm -hmm. It's something that um, is overt, right? Mm -hmm. She knows of being X's existence, you know, rather than like, you know, uh, an equivalent person in her sort of situation where it's more just like the the notion of a being X, right? Yeah. You know, rather than actually like meeting them and talking to them. For sure. And then there's also all the magic and stuff, right? Yep. And having a champion of being X that comes to, to fight her and everything. Right. Tanya has a whole lot of things going for her because she's been isekai'd, right? Yeah. She knows about how, you know, these, well, she knows the about equivalent the past, war. Yeah, know. she knows about the past. She knows about history, all that stuff. That's how she developed the whole idea of, you know, the the mage squadrons to, to basically just be the substitute air force that does these lightning strikes and everything. Yep. But as a result of that, right, she's excelling so much yep. that, well, no, it's only natural Right. That she would get properly commended. No good deed goes unpunished. Yep. You know, you yep. do well like this. You're overqualified for middle management, you, you, honey. You haven't, you haven't you survived know? long enough to go into middle management yet. Like you like, have to, you have you know, to prove more responsibility and then fail a little bit so that we exactly kind of throw you away in a middle management mm -hmm. job. Right, but no, but you you're do, too valuable. Right, but if you do that, if you do that then being X will step in and be like, no, 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 we're gonna mm -hmm. push you to the front again, which I think might be kind of funny to think about is that the reason why being X didn't necessarily step in was because Tanya was actually so competent. Mm -hmm. She was doing so much here yep. that it ended up going that way. And I think that's because she's more adjusting to living in this world yes. and has basically the desire to then Okay, I'm all in with the empire. This right. is this is my th this is where I'm staking my claim. Because even with her middle management position in her previous life, mm. I'm sure there were discomforts about it, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't a perfect cushy life. It was just something where, you know, she was able to just do her thing. Yeah. So now that she's in this other world, she's like, "Okay, but I've got I've got all this ego. I want a perfect cushy life." Right. I want it to be just Right. Mm -hmm. Like that coffee and the or the tea and the chocolate and everything. But, you know, as a result of that, she kind of ends up getting a lot more than what she uh what she wanted. Yep. I loved the bit where she dances <laughs> yes. for joy. Oh my god. Uh, just being like, "Ah, it's I did it. <laughs> I refused to kneel down." Yep. It's like, the perfect uh, like straight so man and uh, I, I forget what the other person the other person in the duo the comedy foil yeah, or something yeah foil or something like that but she's basically a two person comedy routine in and of herself right because when she's being serious and everything it's great and we can see her being the the psycho war lolly and it's hilarious and fighting and all that stuff right right but then when she's like I did it yeah I did it screw you being X. You are done. You're finished. You're nothing. I defeated you. And then, you know, just karma, yep. you know, yep. equal and opposite reaction, whatever you want to call it. Right. Just sort yep. of uh, drops by. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, you know. Yep. All of those hopes and dreams and dances and all of that stuff just shatters right in front of you. 
Right, right. I, oh. I wanted to bring up the whole idea of that um, that unit that she oh, uh-huh. ended up being. Uh, is that is that a legit thing? So I wanted to bring up the idea of something that was the, the salamander. Salamander reminded me of something from World War One, and I believe yeah. So basically, I think what it was was it was related to the British plane that was a ground attack aircraft. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it was essentially a really a uh, strong uh um fighter that would have entered the war from the british side of things but the war ended before it could really be brought in so in this oh. au this is basically saying all right you're our new weapons technology and military strategy kind of thing there and since this mm-hmm. war is going to go essentially beyond what world war one's equivalent uh huh. Because you know, would have been, Tanya's being so successful. Exactly. It's mm-hmm. going on essentially longer, and it is stretching out to uh, a, like a new stage of the World War. Okay. Basically, one where now the the U.S. the unified states in this AU will eventually join in. Mm-hmm. It's just a question of when. And if Mary Sue's involvement within that context will, will have some it. leverage. Yeah, mm-hmm. right, right, exactly. But when I heard Salamander, I was like, wait, wait a minute. I've heard something like that before. But yeah, because you're a big history buff. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not that big of a history buff when okay. it comes to uh, the World War stuff specifically. Because it gets into... Um, the kind of situations where it's either like the political side of things. Oh, uh-huh. Where it's like very much skewed based on you know, whose history you're looking at, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's where it can get a little bit interesting. But if anything, I knew more about, like, certain tactics and troop movements and stuff where it's more literal facts gotcha. stuff rather than why um, and how and It's stuff. not as easy to be biased, yeah. Or it's, yeah, it's just not easy to be wrong. You know? well, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. um, so there was another thing that was brought up in this that apparently seemed to be a legit thing. The, okay, Yosef, the leader of the Federation. Yeah, yeah, like, because... Was his name actually Yosef? I think that uh-huh. was, no, I think that was the comrade that got outed. No, I, I'm pretty sure that I, was I, him. I know, I literally went back and checked, and you're talking about the bald guy that was pervy. No, 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 um, no, 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 I'm talking about the, the guy with the big mustache from the Federation, the one that was the leader. Oh. Because there was the scientist guy, but he was, he just had the ear of, of the leader, right? Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. So, yeah, I think his name was Yosef. Yeah. So, yeah. They're, they're basically implying just, that it was, yeah. all right, we just have, we just, we just have, have Stalin, Stalin right here. here. Yeah. Right. But, but then there was the whole statue thing, which like was. Right. Comrade Loria was this guy. Yeah. Here, was, the was guy with pervy, the pervy dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, can, I can bring back up this scene so we can see to make sure. Mm-hmm. But the guy at the front of the table who you're talking about, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, one I believe that table. was meant to be... A, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, yeah, party leader, comrade, secretary, Yosef. Yeah, yeah, very much... The mustache and everything. Stalin, the... Uh, the, uh-huh. the yeah. and, and even opening up with, a, oh, there must be a traitor in our midst. Execute them. Wait, no, I... I pro- Seriously, I, I didn't do anything. Take him away, you know? Like, Talk him away. Right, yeah. right. But, like... The, the the statue thing that was actually a, a thing that was being built but wasn't right. able to I, be I go like finished double, construction or I can something. Double back and check that, but I believe there was a statue that was being constructed. And um, uh, let me let me let me see if I can bring this up. Because as ridiculous as this show is, I wouldn't expect them to actually use like historical things in the series more just like use it for the aesthetic and general setting right because it makes for a cool style and then you add mages in there with you know flying contraptions and exploding rifles and, and there you go right no it was a statue of lenin right okay it's a statue of lenin that was basically a proposed palace of the soviets yeah and okay it's, yeah the picture straight up just yeah look yeah, up yeah with it yeah that was definitely a an equivalent little callback to mm-hmm a specific structure that was going to be made in honor of Lenin and the the uh, the, the communist movement that started earlier in the, the 20s, I, uh, I believe. But this is a World War II equivalent history thing. Right, here. I think it's technically, well, if it's 26, it's kind of like in between, 
You know, it, right, it, doesn't, right. it doesn't like, I think it t- takes from both a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Because um, this is not a one to one comparison. Exactly. In, Their in planes general. were a lot more advanced than they had in World War One. Right. Know? Magic exists in this world. So exactly. a lot of things are, a lot of things are different yep. specifically. Yep. But, but, but having that extra bit of like, wait, is there actual like, like, information like real info that i can get from this crazy studio nut anime about real world kind of stuff all given through the commentary of this you know crazy you know flying Japanese war salary demon men in the form right, of right, an 11 like, year old like, girl yeah like I- Okay. All right. No, no, no. There's, yeah. there's there's some there's some limited historical things that mm-hmm. you could probably gain from watching this show, but it's more of just a hey, you should probably do some Google searching before exactly. you apply any of the oh, oh, definitely. knowledge right. you gain from this show. Right, but more like pointing out the fact that that information exists sort of a thing. Like it, right. it feels like a rather than like a we're going to use history as an inspiration for the setting and sort yeah. of like rip off all the nations and things like that. Mm-hmm. Instead, we're actually going to bring a a little bit more into it so that yeah. that way it's like this feels just like a very very wacky historical fiction oh it totally is like, it totally is yeah and then there's the isekai element to just add into that exactly. as well but like yeah they they went all out with uh basically just dragging the uh the the, the russian federation equivalent in this uh mm-hmm. in this setting here with the mages all having been purged essentially with the bourgeoisie yeah. which is like oh I mean, well that's Okay, mm-hmm. that's pretty dark, but as a all right. as a like as a world building thing, that kind of makes sense. If you have something like how crazy the Communist Party got in Russia, it would make sense that oh, these people have magic. They have something that we can never attain that they were just sort of born with. Well, that yeah, doesn't that, that sound doesn't, very uh, equal. Yeah, it doesn't you know? sound like it's going to be uh, uh, something that will be uh, beneficial in the vision that we have for society. So. Mm-hmm. I guess that's uh, the way it is. But to be yep. fair, to be fair, they uh, they ended up getting some allies. That's you true. Know? So that's something that uh, mm-hmm. you know I believe is also another little tie into history as well. I believe that there was some um, workings with the Russians in World War uh, World War One. I, I believe it might have been early World War Two. I'm thinking of. Yeah, because I know there. Yeah, because there was a very clear bit of stuff that the U.S. was doing. Pre nineteen forty one in World War Two, right? That involved, um, I believe, the UK and Russia. At least I'm I'm pretty sure there was, mm-hmm. but I don't remember the details of it. But historical stuff aside, there were some cool little moments that just kind of brought us back to the continuity of season one. One of my favorites mm. was the uh, fact that Tanya is wielding Anson Sue's gun. I totally and forgot about that. That was yeah. something that she specifically took off of his, you know, corpse, basically, mm-hmm. of like, this is a pretty good gun. Because yeah. I believe it was like a freaking, like, like as a modified, like, it, it's a modified, like, crazy type of gun. So mm-hmm. she was like, ooh, this is, this is a good gun. Well, taking that combined with magic, that uh-huh. seems just great. Yeah. Right, right. But just the the moment of when the explosion happens, the first one, mm-hmm. and... You know, Mary Sue's just like battered there, like, wow, it hurts to get shot by a gun. But you can see the rage and frustration, Uh like keeping her alive. And then again, when Tanya just absolutely, like, basically looked like she obliterated her after knocking down the huge, like, Uh you know, tower. uh, Yep. Yeah, yeah. And uh, onto her. And And the fact that she. Oh. Well, and the fact that for that with the building, she was using Mary Sue's own laser to cut the thing. So it's right. like, you know, your own hatred and anger shall be your downfall kind of a thing. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. The blind rage of a mad, mad oh, yeah. woman with power and on that yep. scale, Tanya's just fighting for her life. And it's like, oh, you've got that? Well, I'm going to use oh. that against you. Mm-hmm. Not everything I can. You're not thinking really straight here. So yep. I, I oh. love convincing descents into madness for characters. I feel mm. like a lot of the times it can be done sort of casually, especially in anime, because it's the, you know, the there's the yandere trope and things like that, right? Right. So seeing it in a situation like this where it's like, hey, I know that it's being done as a um 
as a as a bit, right? She's Mary Sue. Totally. She has the tragic backstory. Here we go. This is her introduction. Though. This is her introduction. But I still believe it, right? Yeah. And 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 the, the way it was slow, like I expected her to be more psycho from the get go. Yeah. You know. But then it's like, oh no, she has trouble shooting her gun and things like that. Yeah. And you know, conversations with her commanding officer. She about, cares about her squad. Yeah. And she even cares about why she's here. Right. Even though they're not people that are like really like close to her right it's it's this other nation and stuff and they're not even necessarily great people but i'm but talking also about her squad no no no, no yeah yeah no i know i know stuff. but but that's that i feel like is um given that you're right exactly okay. that that's that's something that's easy to sort of take for granted whereas the the stuff of actually caring about no no we're here to help this other country right like mm-hmm. like is that just a pretense or are we actually going to do that there's sure. people here let's help them out you know yeah. but then it's the well hold on is it just because you want to help the people or is it actually because you also kind of want revenge, you know? Yeah. Like getting yeah. that for a side, well, side character, the antagonist, but not not the focus character in a film, I really like that. Mm-hmm. Like that was good stuff. Yeah, it felt necessary though that they do that in order for her to be a threat that goes beyond the movie. Because exactly. Because that's what she mm-hmm. is. She didn't die from that explosion. No, she she didn't die from getting shot shot like six times. So she's going to live, uh carry over into like hopefully a season two. Yep. And Tanya's going to encounter her again. And I'm so excited. Like, like, I I really like her as a a main antagonist or a continuing antagonist. I agree. And and also that little bit in the very beginning of the movie with uh, Shugo being shown in 1966, 40 years after the events that we saw through the rest of the movie, Mm -hmm. meaning that the Empire loses. Yep. And it went really bad. And how did it go bad? Something like personal feelings Hmm. got involved. Hmm. So... I, I'm impressed also that the movie, probably with how they did the adaptation or something like that, because it's hard to localize themes uh, too much. Out this, of a serialized right, narrative. Exactly. Because that wasn't really one of the primary themes in the first season. It was lightly touched upon, I think, mm-hmm. a little bit in that one town that ended up getting basically just raised. Uh-huh. Just absolutely obliterated. But that was more, I think, about realizing the consequences of your actions mm-hmm. and thinking about the broader implications of it. So it was Tanya taking more responsibility right. for not just the things around her immediately, but like, mm-hmm. are you going to like think about this in the long term, Tanya? But this is more of the thing of where if you bring in all those personal feelings into a war you might lose sight of the reasons why you're fighting this war. Because Tanya said, and I'm so glad that they did this for her, but she said uh-huh. that she hates war. And yep. I think that the shtick of her character might be one that people could mistake then for being one that loves war. But, but she's not the no. major from Helsing Ultimate. Right, not, she isn't. I love war. Right, <laughs> right. Like, no, she's it not. Sounds like you're saying something so different. I, when, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Vice, you know? Uh-huh, right. <laughs> but uh yeah and but the that's one of the things that makes her character compelling i feel like with her struggle because she doesn't want to be here she but, wants a quiet simple quiet life you know exactly you know yeah. but all these these hands up above that mm-hmm. you know just the hand of god hovering above exactly yeah is uh-huh. the destiny of lolly kind controlled by some transcendental entity or law oh is my it god like it's a hand of god hovering above at least it is true that tanya has no control not even over her own will exactly yeah, but, uh, I I kind of want Tanya to take over the the empire. So that on that the military might, side of things or the political side of things, kind of both. I want her to like end the up supreme. Yeah, chairman. Like, of- like I want her to do so well that she rises to the actual top, and then that's so everything and falls out apart. Of her character. No, though. I know she would so not want to be there. But like, imagine if it gets to the point where she does so much, <sighs> and like she's like a like a war criminal or something at some point where it's the oh shit I've made enough of a name for myself that if the empire <laughs> falls I will be I will be crucified right, right. like okay well yeah. um uh what can I do mm-hmm. I guess we just have to win but we can't win that's not how this goes mm-hmm. but this is a different world so maybe <laughs> you know like maybe uh, maybe oh man it does give me hope though that there might be something 
grander moving mm-hmm. on scale wise eventually in the future given that the source material is way ahead apparently of where we're at um but also yeah we just have to wait for season two in that regard as well, well because indeed. um i did some looking into it and there's only like rumors there's no actual confirmation unfortunately yeah. i feel like getting movies like this is a blessing and a curse because yeah. you get this wonderful package right where yep. where it's it's all polished it's and, and and beautiful and wonderful but then yep. at the same time i feel like the movie is sort of that thing that you do instead of another season where it's yep. like okay we're not really going to do any more unless so, you're a really popular unless shonen. you're really popular yep. So instead, we're going to end on a high note to mm-hmm. generate as much traffic redirection towards the source material, yep. you know. Probably. But, yeah. yeah. This was a part of the Isekai Quartet thing, though, right? Yes. Yes. So that's a spinoff. That's true. And in some ways, like, you know, the equivalent of something like ReZero, which was insanely popular and took a long time for them to get a second season of for a really mm-hmm. popular Isekai that yeah. was an Isekai Quartet. Yeah, that's Maybe true. Maybe it's just that Studio Nut was focused on other, you know, shows at the time. Hey, I would that love was, that. Yeah, because that was, um, what was the show that came out recently we put on a poll? Um, yes, uh, it was um, Decadence. Decadence, right? that's Decadence, right. Yeah. yeah. So if anything, they're probably like, you know, more free it up now to do maybe some newer stuff. Hopefully. 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 You know, I, that, I think the show definitely deserves a season two because it's got a proper long-term story mm-hmm. that they can take however long they want. Yep. But they've also got enough of a core strength of vision within the uh, main character primar- primarily mm-hmm. where any more content with it is going to be at least, you know, for the most part, pretty engaging. Right. Because like regard- just their dialogue is oh, fun yeah. to, oh, yeah. to like, watch. Having, having one man banter like that, you know, that's, that's tough. And, you know, one man. It's very it's, tough. It's, well, yeah. I mean... <laughs> Yeah. One lolly, you know, but but the point is, one you know, man in the yeah anyway. Yeah. But having having banter from one character and having it be that good, mm-hmm. like that's that's really tough. Like I it feel like tough, regardless yeah. of what the plot ended up being, right? I would still want to see what happens next as Tanya just goes on her crazy adventures. Yeah, it, so. it's really the strength of having the setup for the character and then the way that the character reacts to the world being something that is right. just that engaging and fun. And then, of course, also just, you know, just horrifically cringe at parts because you're like, oh, my God, that's right. We're dealing with a psycho here, just actually somewhat crazy. And then we see it in glorious, like, mm-hmm. animated dance form and yep. everything. And it's just, wow, we're uh-huh. rooting for this character. We like, are. Like, we're yeah. actually uh-huh. rooting for this character. Yep. It's like the only way that works is because being X exists. Right. But other than that, it's like, she's actually it's just the, a villain protagonist. Like, Yeah, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and I feel like this is how you can really do a villain protagonist well. You yeah. don't necessarily make them likable or even really <laughs> sympathetic, but you just make them fun. Fun and enjoyable, <laughs> right? So, you know. There you go. Yeah. But uh, y'all, there we go. Movie reaction, mm-hmm. discussion, finished and done. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end here. Let us know in the comments, like, what was your favorite part of the movies or something like that. Right. And uh, we'll see if we can figure out a way to discuss it in some way, maybe in the Discord, which, by the way, if you are a Patreon, any level of support gets you access to that. Also, there is a tier specifically for full-length timer versions of this reaction as well. You know, given that it's a 100-minute movie, you know, that... Could Might be, be something be, that would be a good idea to look into. Could be a good one. Yeah, there. Mm-hmm. So uh, check that out. And also be sure to check out our Twitch channel. Indeed. Uh, the Twitch channel is in the description. But uh, basically we stream Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific time for each of those days. Monday's is podcast. Tuesdays we do One Piece dramatic manga readings. They're very fun. Indeed. Wednesdays and Fridays you're doing gaming. Yep, I'm playing Hades right now. Yeah, so check that out. And then on Thursdays I'm doing uh, Persona 4 Golden right now. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.